This episode brought to you by the Black Tux, premium rental suits and tuxedos delivered. I know I left it in here somewhere. Ah, here we go. Original classic. You know, when did Tim Burton and Johnny Depp become the people you call to tone down the imagination? Critic! Malice? We need your help right away. Tell me all about it! So there's great trouble brewing in- <sighs> oh. Don't make me go curious on your ass. Oh, come on, Malice. I know I'm doing a Disney live-action remake month, but they didn't even do an animated Through the Looking Glass movie. Yes, but the animated Alice in Wonderland looks more like Through the Looking Glass than the live-action Through the Looking Glass. Sadly true. Besides, a lot has changed. Tim Burton's gone. Everything's more bright and colorful. Even Johnny Depp's better. Really? All that happened? It's only two out of those three things, yes. <sighs> All right, how do I get there? Do I eat something or go through a magical door? No, we use this technologically advanced time machine to go wherever we'd like. Gee, how magical. Well, what do you think? I think this might actually work. I just can't get over how beautiful everything looks. I mean, it's bright, it's colorful. <laughs> Surreal. I mean, dare I say it, there's a sense of wonder here. Good, I didn't want to have to cut off your and feed them to my wildebeest. It sounds like you did. I did, but I won't. Yeah, that's progress. So, remind me again what the urgent matter is. Carrot juice is sad. And? His entire family died in a fire. Recently? No, long ago. And we have to stake our entire world upon making him happy again. Okay, look, it sucks that he's sad. Really sucks. But it happens. People cope. No, we have to go back in time to cause his family's death. Huh? As well as causing every horrible thing that's ever happened in our world. What? While trying to learn a lesson about not being able to change the past, but being rewarded for changing the past. Repeat of previous what? It's mad. Isn't that the way it's supposed to be? Yeah, but there's a difference between mad and dumb. Mad is being concerned that a pocket watch is two days slow or everybody's cheating to win a race that everybody wins. Dumb is trying to take those simple, charming ideas and turn into a big action end of the world thriller. But I'm sad. I don't care that you're sad. If anything, it pisses me off that all our problems are centered around a dumb, moping jackass. Bunny. That's what you are! Well, you're obviously no help. Come on, Carrot Juice. Let's go back in time and almost cause the end of the world to perk you up. Here. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what happens. La 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 The sequel to the unfortunate live-action hit, Alice in Wonderland, happily didn't win over audiences or critics. On the one hand, it's very easy to see why. It's continuing its lame attempt at making Wonderland, oh sorry, Underland, however did I confuse those two, into a rebellious action-packed resistance movie. Like its predecessor, it has virtually nothing to do with the Lewis Carroll books, but to its credit, it does actually have seeds of what Alice in Wonderland was. Okay, there's seeds growing under a brick house of dumb, but they're still seeds. Is it a shame, then, that this one made less money despite it having more elements from the books than the original? Or is this series just getting, inevitably, what it deserves? Let's take a closer look. This is Alice Through the Looking Glass. Surrendering my father's ship! Okay, when I said there's elements of the original, I didn't mean right away. Yeah, Alice is the captain of her own ship now, and she's about as commanding as Kira Knightley leading pirates. Between the two of them, I don't think they could lead a school of fish. Hard to port, Harper! I'll give credit to Alice, played again by Mia Wojcikowska. There is at least a little investment in her performance. Though granted, after the last film, an aggressive blink would be welcomed at this point. That's enough chatter. Whoa, tone down there, Daniel Day-Lewis! 
but she doesn't have much to work off of as, once again, she plays the ahead-of-her-time outsider who must prove she's tough and independent before proving she's interesting or has a personality. <laughs> The cliched, pompous, uppity have more personality if you really think about it. No other company is in the business of hiring female clerks, let alone ship's captains. My teeth can't get any bigger, but my monocle certainly can. There will be no further expeditions. You will start in files, but in time. My transition of Billy Zane <laughs> a fat is almost complete. Well, my transition into the NBC Peacock is almost complete. Let's just agree we're sillier than anything we're going to see in Wonderland. Wonderland. Oh, yes, stupid movies. Okay, do Americans just have trouble noticing the vowels after the R sound? Like, it's pronounced ferret, not fert, or whatever that was. There, though. <laughs> Like, I, I get that that's part of the American accent, that, you know, whenever there's a vowel before an R sound, it's always a long vowel, hence carrot instead of carrot, and, and for some reason the vowel after the R is always silent for some reason, but if you're gonna attempt an English accent, at least try to get it right, Doug and Tamara. Ugh. And also, a little hint on the intrusive R, like, that only happens between vowels. Like, it doesn't happen at the end of a syllable. Just pointing that out. Moving on. Your father set those shares aside for me. He gave them to your mother, who sold them to me a year ago while you were gone, along with the bond on the house. House bond, stock shares, company ownership. Alice in Wonderland, everybody! At this point in the original book, she just got done talking with flowers and met the queen on a giant chessboard. <laughs> with that here she's wondering whether or not she wants to sign over her father's ship to save her mother's house. Oh. But it's in a garden! That's kind of the same thing! Sea captain is no job for a lady. You can't just make things however you want them to be. Clearly you've never met the writers of these movies. We do eventually get to... <sighs> Underland. As the caterpillar, now a butterfly, leads her to the looking glass where she crosses over. Oh no, the guests are trying to get in through the locked door. Hurry, Alice, before... They get in and ask what's going on. Why is this urgent? Believe it or not, we actually do partake in some Wonderland-ish material. Knocking over Humpty Dumpty, bickering with chess pieces, doors leading to the sky. So this is what Alice in Wonderland could have been... Oh, plot hole. What's the matter? The Hatter's the matter. He's grown darker. Denies himself laughter. And no scheme of ours can raise any sort of smile. Yep, the Mad Hatter is feeling sad because he came across a blue hat that reminded him of his family killed by the Queen of Hearts. Not sure why Alice was brought in to deal with this. Maybe her slight sense of acting direction can set off Depp's complete lack of acting direction. I found this. So if this hat survived, my family must have too. Yeah, if Depp's hatter acting in the first one was the equivalent of his Fantastic Beast performance, then this one is definitely his Mordecai performance. I never said I was sorry when I had the child. It's like his Willy Wonka was too drunk to find a job, so he became the local Ronald McDonald. He looks beyond lost. You are not you. There's a hole in the world like a great black pit, and it's from this movie that's full of because I know you're all invested. Why don't you remind us of the plot again, Alice? Find Time's castle, borrow the chronosphere, travel back in time to Horror and Vendor's Day, save the Hatter's family from being killed, and thereby save the Hatter. And then get McFly to kiss at the prom so my picture will come back. And if your past self sees your future self, everything would be history. <laughs> that really doesn't sound worth the risk. I mean, I like the Mad Hatter. Actually, I don't even like him. But even if I did, it's not worth risking the entire friggin' world. You know, because it's the entire friggin' world. How's this counting on you? We all are. Why? You really are making a mountain out of one of these. He's depressed. Sucks. Grab him some Prozac and show him some Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, minus this episode. The end of the world does not need to factor into this. She goes to the center of time, as she's the only one who can do it because she's not from around there. Oh, those restrictive rules that limit the imagination of Wonderland. Oh, sorry, Underland. She also discovers that time is a he, played by Sacha Baron Cohen. Who is there? I saw you. 
How did you get in? It is impossible. Really? It was a literal hop and a skip. I don't see where the impossible comes in. Despite not being in the books, this character does surprisingly bring a similar charming goofiness that would probably be found in them. And it's actually refreshing to hear ideas and wordplay centered around time being explored. Everyone parts with everything eventually. These minuscule artisans are my seconds. Thank you for your you, sir. If Alice came across time in the books, I feel like this is probably how it would go. You see, the Jabberwocky killed his family on the Horrendendish Day, and I killed the Jabberwocky on the Fratish Day, and I'd like your permission to complete the Birth Chromosphere to compare to uh. But again, it doesn't last long. For guess who shows up again? No, really, they want you to guess before they reveal her. Shall I announce you? Oh, no, never mind. <laughs> announce myself. <laughs> who could it be? A performer who used to be subtle but gave it up for screaming and crazy hair. The other one. There you go. Oh, can we get that fast forward thing back from earlier? These are the parts that really need it. It looks like time has fallen in love with the abusive Queen of Hearts, played again by Helena bottoming out Carter, as it looks like she still has it in her contract to have the camera two inches away from her at all times. I could get even with my sister, and we could war the past, the present. Okay, you look like Pennywise about to French me. Please stop confusing the camera for your toothbrush. Alice decides to take control of the Chronosphere to go back in time to save Hatter's family, but not before battling Time's minions. <laughs> I have to stop this from turning into a Les Mis reunion. I can't hear Russell Crowe sing again! She must have the Chronosphere. All our hopes fly with you. Hi, Critic. Just a heads up, the time traveling is going great, but the world may accidentally go to there. Like how it's gonna blow up or something? No, literally turn to We will all become turds. But at least Carrot Juice will be happy again. Yeah. Yeah, weird thing, it's hard to get invested over a character we barely see. There's not really much of an emotional connection to justify the end of the world, you know? Don't listen to him, Carrot Juice. You've got a ton of personality that we're exploring. Well, I... Shut up, I'm talking. Oh. The world will be so happy to see you happy again, or we'll die trying as well as the world. Yes, I said we. Ooh, she's having cake with a lion and a unicorn now. What's that? Why, yes, I'd love to play football with you. <gasps> Except I don't have my talks! Yeah, I read your comments the last time I did this sponsorship. You're right, I should have done this joke, so I'm doing it now. Where can I get a tux where I don't look like a loser in public who doesn't have a tux? That must be the black tux mailing me my order! That I never placed. Everyone wants to look good for that special event, but they don't want to fork out a ton of money for it either. Well, theblacktux.com is your answer with high quality rental suits and tuxedos delivered to your doorstep. It's such an easy way to rent suits and tuxes online. Most suits go for something like 1200 bucks, but at the Black Tux, they start at $95. They let you create your own look and choose from a ton of great stylists. Their expert customer care has your back every step of the way, and it's completely done online. You can even do a free home try-on so you can see the fit and feel the quality of your suit months before your big event. And after ordering your suit, they'll have it to you 14 days before the event even starts. And if anything is less than perfect, the Black Tux will send you a free replacement right away. When your event is over, you just drop your rental back in the mail and shipping is free both ways. And hey, you want to get 20 bucks off your purchase? Just visit theblacktux.com slash nostalgiacritic. That's right, just go to theblacktux.com slash nostalgiacritic and you'll get $20 right off your purchase. All I gotta do is put this beautiful tuxedo on and I'll be ready to play football. There is no footage of Doug playing football because Doug does not have a football. Football scare him. They remind him of his lack of masculinity. However, here is some footage of him in that awesome tux with a drawing of what he thinks a football looks like. Hot. Visit theblacktux.com. Premium rental suits and tuxedos delivered.
So Alice travels to when the Hatter and his family made the crowns of the White Queen and the Queen of Hearts. Only princesses, then. It looks like the crown doesn't fit the giant head, though, causing the crowd to laugh. <laughs> you know, for being Hatters, they really suck at it. Didn't they prepare for this? Put a bag on her head. <laughs> okay! A princess! Yeah. Enough! But I was going to say my trademark thing! It was going to be a big deal, and I'm not sure why it being interrupted is still trying to make it a big deal! You are unfit to rule, Erasabeth. She loses the crown and vows vengeance on the Hatters. Wouldn't it make more sense to vow vengeance on the lady that made fun of her? And the Hatter's father balls him out. All I did was laugh, father. Why am I never good enough for you? Why is you always such a disappointment? You will believe a character you don't give a about is trying to make you give a about him. Alice tells the Hatter about how his family is going to get killed, but he doesn't care. So she tries to tell the family, but they're in the middle of fighting off incredibly force exposition. All of Whitsend laments the day of your sister's accident. As the clock struck six, I shall never forget that snowy night when she hit her head in the town square. That moment changed everything. Get in? Got it. Good. So she goes to try and stop the Queen of Hearts from hitting her head, while Time tries to follow her, but comes across the Hatter during his tea party. Again, in all honesty, this scene has a real legit Alice in Wonderland feel. It's different levels of insanity trying to relate to each other and getting nowhere. And it's actually clever as well as entertaining. Is it true that you heal all wounds? Time is on my side. I have always wondered when soon is. If you vex me, it will be an eternity. But even that's botched in an attempt to throw a kind of twist in there. And until the young Alice joins you for tea, it will always remain one minute till tea time for you and your underheads. You get it? So when Alice showed up in the first film, she was actually freeing them. That's why they were at that table the whole time. Why is that supposed to be fun? Wasn't it crazier, or even mad, that they were just sitting there the whole time because they wanted to? Nobody said, oh, I really want it so that they're prisoners there. They just wanted them to be in their own little world because it's enjoyable. Again, you're trying to add logic in something that doesn't need it. The series really is like the villain from Care Bears in Wonderland, trying to add logic and order to a world that shouldn't have any. Except in that, he's the bad guy. Here, it's just Disney! And that's still the better adaptation, by the way! Alice travels to the Hatter's childhood, and if you think him as an adult was boring and awkward... You have a very nice head. And a nice head deserves a very nice hat. That's what my father says. Would you like him to make you one? Isn't this just what you imagined with the Mad Hatter as a little kid? Imagine the animated one as a child bouncing off the walls, or the Martin Short one acting like a wild animal, and this one! As bland as that kid who gets axed off in Revenge of the Sith! You have a very nice head. There are too many of them. What are we going to do? And despite this not being directed by Tim Burton, it still somehow has the exact same backstory as his Willy Wonka remake. The function of a hat is to follow the proper dictum of society. Not to be fun. Hatting is a serious business. Why can't my limiting ideas get through to your slightly less limiting ideas? Despite having two attempts to tell the family how to avoid getting murdered, Alice once again neglects to so she can stop the Queen of Hearts from hitting her head. Which it turns out is because her sister stole a tart and blamed her. Did you eat the tarts and put the crust there? No, but you did, you're lying! No, it's not fair! It's not fair! Next she'll be telling me she ate Marceline's fries. Alice tries stopping the accident, but she only ends up causing it, starting her head turning huge. You cannot change the past. She realizes now that she can't change time and it was wrong to meddle with it. But she also realizes that the Hatter's family is still alive. Go meddling! Always the answer! <laughs> time catches up with Alice though and she observes they slowly die. And the end of the world will take place if the Chronosphere is not returned. So naturally Alice looks into her heart and I must say that. tells him to off. Alice! 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 She is literally looking at a dying man and the end of the world is upon us, but the Hatter is sad! <laughs> she is so freaking crazy she belongs in a mental institution. Where am I? You are in an institution. Well, I'm glad you agree with me, movie, but... Huh? 
Okay, so apparently she passed out when she traveled through the looking glass and they took her to a mental ward. Textbook case of female hysteria. Untreatable, some say. Okay, what are they gonna do with this? Well, she escapes. Three years at sea taught me anything. It's how to tie a good knot. Why thanks, me. It was important to remind me of that, me. And she goes back through the looking glass. <laughs> that whole thing lasted three minutes. Why the hell did we have that detour? Oh, hi, critic. I just wanted to give you some incredibly important information that we were delayed for just a moment. But we're back on track. And he's still sad. Go. Just go. But he's still sad. Leave. But leave. Okay. Right. Apparently thinking his parents are dead is killing him. Can't tell if he's dying of a broken heart or a broken career. I should have believed you. You wouldn't leave her. Your Alice. Uh, never your Alice again. I'm putting you on a watch list. Hatter suddenly gets better hearing the news that his family is alive and that the Queen of Hearts most likely has them. I'm going to find that Red Queen and bring my family home. That is such a Hatter thing to say. He's such a well-defined character. So they all try breaking into the Queen's hideout? I don't really know what it is. Where they find his family is in an ant farm. When it's you. Hi, Dad. Been waiting a long time for this. But they all get caught because even though Alice verbally clarified the importance of tying knots, she forgot to verbally clarify the importance of bringing weapons to a battle. What kind of a dumb captain are you? The Queen takes control of time and his machine to travel back with her sister. Oh, this is all my fault. No, no, all of it. But the guards decide they don't like the queen and let our heroes go. Why the didn't you betray her when she was still there? As the queen takes her sister to the tart moment so she can finally confess her lie. She put them there. Did you, Morana? Did you? No. So the moral is everyone's a terrible person. It's the Seinfeld finale of fantasies. But the film follows time cop logic as the queen sees herself, which somehow starts freezing over the entire world. So just a reminder, you can't change the past, except when you can totally, absolutely change the past. Don't seem to recall her opening the door and freezing the world the first time she stole the tarts. But the Hatter was sad. They try to get the chronosphere back where it belongs as everyone starts crusting over. Goodbye, brother. Brother, goodbye. I have cherished every moment with all of you. Gentlemen, it has been a privilege playing with you tonight. Alice, of course, gets it back in time as the world is just barely saved and the White Queen finally confesses her fault. I ate the tarts and I lied about it. I should have just told the truth and none of this would have ever happened. I'm so sorry. That's all I ever wanted to hear. Aw, that's just great. Hey, remember all those decapitated heads in the first film? It's okay, because she forgave her for the tart. Hey, remember that frog that was taken away from his family and executed? It's okay, because she forgave her for the tart. Remember the mass genocide, oppression, and countless lives destroyed because of every single one of these dumb idiots? Tarts! It was all down to Tarts. I think the real question is not who's the real villain, but who isn't the real villain? So yeah, things are okay, apart from the countless graves, as Alice goes home to see her mother signing the deed to her ship. Mr. Harcourt, time is money. I'm afraid he most certainly is not. Where did you come from? I walked right through the walls. <laughs> Arrest her, she escaped from a mental institution. Bye! I may not be able to change the past, but I can learn from it. We're... we're not doing that? You want me to sign them? It's just a ship. There's always another. We had that whole scene in the movie, we're just going to ignore it? But you were my mother, and I only have one. Okay, I guess straitjackets are useless over the power of learning lessons? I knew that you would, headstrong or not. You're not a nice man, Hamish. Ooh, that one hurt.
So they don't sign over the ship, and Alice's mother instead decides to give up her home to go sailing with her daughter. I'm in tide wait for no man, Mr. Harcourt. Or indeed, woman. No, it's time to walk the dogs! Okay, so that was awful. Like, really awful. Like, really awful. Like, really awful. Really awful. But I have to admit, I didn't dislike it as much as the first one. The first one had virtually no elements of Wonderland at all, apart from maybe a little bit of the look. This one at least tapped into some moments. The majority of Time's character was both clever and charming. Scenes with the chessboard and tea party felt more whimsically surreal and fun, like in the original book. And the overall visual style is quite impressive, even better than the first. Aside from that, though, it still doesn't get across what makes Alice in Wonderland a timeless story. It still adds too many rules, too many limitations, and too many attempts to make it a big, thrilling adventure when a small, abstract story is more than enough. Both of these Alice films are bad, but I can surprisingly stomach this one a little more for the few good moments it had. On the whole, though, it's still an oyster gone bad. Okay, and I'm done. I'm gonna go home and watch the good Alice in Wonderland movie. Oh, you got happy again, huh? We ruined the lives of how many countries along the way, but I'm happy once more. And what made you so ecstatic? Well, the fact that your Alice in Wonderland doesn't exist anymore. What are you talking about? I got a copy of it right here. Ah! That's right, Critic. That's all we've done to your Alice in Wonderland. We've turned it into Now when people see Alice in Wonderland, they won't see the animated one. All they'll see is and recite your lesson. Oh, time traveling and the Mad Hatter's a dramatic character and the end of the world because of a tart. Alice, what in the flaming are you talking about? Oh, I'm sorry, but you see Tim Burton said. Tim Burton? No one's going to remember his later films. Half of them are flops, even the ones he produced. Oh, then I guess like me, people are waking up and seeing the stories that really last. Whatever. Come now, it's time for Duck Dynasty. But this world was called Underland. That sounds stupid. And it had a breakdancing Mad Hatter. You're talking like a moron. And there was a lot of discussion about home ownership. Shut up now. And I was in a mental institution. Well, that I'd believe. And we killed how many people just to make an awkward actor happy? I swear, Alice, I will strangle you with my bonnet if you don't stop your <laughs> yapping. Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out, and this week we are doing Catholic Relief Services. They work with organizations around the world to help poor and vulnerable people overcome emergencies, earn a living through agriculture, and access affordable health care. They help millions of farmers worldwide recover from natural disasters and civil strife and build resilient farming systems. Their vision is to promote solidarity and compassion through timely emergency and recovery actions that address the needs of the most vulnerable. As a leader in international humanitarian aid, they often go where others don't, carrying out a wide array of health-related activities tailored to the needs of the countries and the communities they serve. If you look at their site and their YouTube channel, you can see all the various people who contribute to this cause, as well as all the folks and places they transform for the better. Click on the link and play a big part in their mission to help and heal.